So I wanted to take a closer look at Shelley's structure and these, this kind of idea of space and sound and how this um, bolsters the effect of non-linguistic sound and what this means and how this affects human expression. And I wanted to examine it with more of a modernist example in Ralph Vaughan Williams' The Lark Ascending, which is a classical piece published in 1914. So, while Ralph Vaughan Williams wasn't necessarily inspired by Shelley to write this piece, he was inspired by George Meredith, who, whose poem The Lark Ascending was published in 1881. I think there are a lot of structural similarities and like a similar um, kind of goal with both pieces, and I think they end up, um, they work really well together. They pair nicely. So, first I wanted to make note of Vaughn Williams' use of the pentatonic scale in the um, in the Lark solo. So using this is pretty traditional in folk music, but isn't necessarily traditional in terms of the way he structures it. So the Lark solo is performed by a violin, where a bird is usually performed by a flute. So it contains this conventional yet unconventional form, and it draws attention to the Lark's um, the lark sound over the rest of the orchestra. And similarly, we see this like image of five in um, To a Skylark where we see the stanzas are organized in um, lines of five, which is unconventional, but also still adhering to the idea of stanzas in poetry. So it draws the listener or the reader's attention to kind of a different form. So um, he also, Vaughn Williams, created um, a musical language which could explore harmonic dissonances outside of this rigid structure that is uh, that we saw in modernism. So he, instead of using like a 4-4 tempo or a 2-4 tempo, he used 6-8 tempo to bring forth more movement through the piece and draw more attention to the lark solo and make it so that it produced more human expression. It, it, it drew the reader, the listener, in more. And similarly, we see that Shelley's rhythm is um, in trimeter, which is unconventional, well, unconventional in poetry, but also is still there, is still normal and still used. So it's different for the reader to read trochaic trimeter instead of iambic pentameter, as Dr. Sigler said in his lecture, because of the different stresses in syllables. So it kind of creates this a very different pace and a different tempo, which is important in the um, emphasis of different words. So um, Vaughn Williams uses music to represent the lark's flight and how this act of flying above and ascending somewhere where it's free space creates um, a, quote, speech act unfettered by linguistic structure, suggesting the utterance of unspeakable personal truth. So the reason that Vaughn Williams is going for this imagery or this soundscape is to highlight the idea of ascending away from conventional norms and trying to think differently, think outside of the box and be more inspiring to the listener. And because of this, he did inspire a lot of listeners. Um, uh, we also know that Vaughn Williams was a radical thinker and felt the need to use politics in his music and was very focused on the idea of art being a representation of extending human expression. So similarly in Shelley, as we know, he is a radical thinker, um, which we see in a lot of the topics in his poetry, but specifically in To Skylark, um, he mentions, uh, quote, thy voice is loud. So although the lark does not speak any language, it's only sound, it's still resonant in the listener that is being the narrator of the poem. It's resonant because it is, isn't is bound by linguistic structure, it is free. Um, and that's also um, supported with the image of the bird flying, ascending, and being alone. So the speaker further says, quote, I have never heard praise of love or wine sorry, that pointed forth a love of rapture so divine. So, like I said, this really demonstrates how different and how expressive sound is without linguistic 
structure and without having to be bound to a set of rules. And so this lark is, you know, flying by itself and singing its own song without, you know, the implications of love or pain and is singing it not to impress anyone, but just to be. And I think that Shelley is so interested in that concept because that's not what, that's not how we function as humans, right? So at the end, he states, quote, the world should listen then as I am listening now. So I think what I'm getting at here is that listening to music or to, um, you know, a non-human animal, it kind of creates this idea of how expressive and how interesting listening can be and how sound can communicate more than words that we consume. So, um, if you guys ever get a chance to listen to The Lark Ascending, I would highly recommend.